1 Thessalonians chapter 4 Through the Bible Part 9 For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 14 I want you to notice that Paul says that Jesus died and rose again. It doesn't say Jesus slept. He died. How accurate this is. There are three kinds of death in Scripture. There is physical death, which is the separation of the spirit from the body. That is what we ordinarily call death. Adam didn't actually die physically until 930 years after the fall. Then there is spiritual death. Paul says that to be carnally minded is death, which is separation from God. This is what happened to man in the Garden of Eden, when God said that man would die. In the day he ate of the fruit, man became separated from God. Adam hid from God. He ran from God when God came into the garden. There was now a separation between them. Adam did die. The day he ate the fruit is spiritual death. Paul describes this spiritual death in Ephesians 2 verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. A famous judge toured around this country some years ago, giving a lecture entitled, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. There followed him a famous Baptist preacher whose lecture was, Millions Now Living Are Already Dead. And they were dead, spiritually dead. The third death is eternal death. That is, eternal separation from God. This is the second death described in Revelation 20 verse 14. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15 By the word of the Lord is Paul's assurance that he is giving God's answer to their question. Paul knows that they had been worrying about those who had died before the rapture and wants them to know that the dead in Christ will have part in the rapture. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The word prevent is an old English word meaning precede. Those who are alive at the time of the rapture will not be going ahead of them. In fact, the dead in Christ will be going first. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 The Lord himself shall descend from heaven. I love that. He won't be sending angels. When he comes to the earth to establish his kingdom, he will send his angels to the four corners of the earth to gather the elect, who will be both Israelites and Gentiles who enter the kingdom. However, there is no angel ministry connected with the rapture of the church. Angels announce the birth of Christ, but how is he announced? As the son of David, the newborn king. He was announced as a king. The wise men wanted to know where they could find him who was born king of the Jews. In contrast to this, at the establishment of the church on the day of Pentecost, there were no angels. The Holy Spirit Himself came down. When the Lord takes His church out of the world, the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. There will be no angels. Angels are connected with Israel, but not with the church at all. He will descend from heaven with a shout. That is the voice of command. It is the same voice which He used when He stood at the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. John 11 verse 43 The voice of the archangel Now wait, isn't that an angel connected with the rapture? No, it is his voice that will be like the voice of an archangel. It is the quality of his voice, the majesty and the authority of it. The trump of God. Will there be trumpets there? No, it is his voice that will be like a trumpet. Can we be sure of this? In Revelation 1 verse 10, John, who was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, wrote, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, 
as of a trumpet. He turned to see who it was, and he saw the glorified Christ. It is the voice of the glorified Christ that is like the sound of a trumpet. That ought to get rid of all this foolishness about Gabriel blowing his horn or blowing a trumpet. I don't think Gabriel even owns a trumpet, but if he has one, he won't need to blow it. The Lord Jesus is not going to need the help of Gabriel. Do you think the Lord Jesus needed Gabriel to come and help him raise Lazarus from the dead? Can you imagine the Lord Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus saying, Gabriel, won't you come over here and help me get this man out of the grave? How absolutely foolish. The Lord Jesus will not need anyone to help him. When he calls his church, their bodies will come up out of the graves. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 Again, caught up is the Greek harpezo, meaning to grasp hastily, snatch up, to lift, transport, or rapture. It is going to be a very orderly procedure. The dead will rise first. Here comes Stephen out of the grave. It may be that he will lead the procession, since he was the first martyr. Then there will be the apostles and all those millions who have laid down their lives for Jesus. They will just keep coming from right down through the centuries. Finally, if we are alive at that time, we will bring up the rear of the parade. We will be way down at the tail end of it. Most of the church has already gone in through the doorway of death. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18 does he say, Wherefore terrify one another with these words? Of course not. My Bible says, Wherefore comfort one another. It not only means to comfort, in the usual sense of the word, but also to instruct and to exhort one another and to talk about these things. My friend, Jesus is going to take his own out of this world someday. What a glorious, wonderful comfort this is. The bodies of the dead will be lifted out. Then whoever is alive at that time will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. In fact, we shall come back with him to the earth to reign with him at the time he sets up his kingdom.